Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for adjust, adjusting your schedules to be here uh, at this time, uh, representing the Oversight um, and Government Reform Committees. Uh, Chairman of the Committee, Mr. Issa, the Ranking Member, Mr. Cummings, uh, we would appreciate hearing from you as um, how you're operating this year with the 5 percent uh, is projected as a result of the House resolution which was passed earlier this year. Uh, Mr. Issa. I would ask unanimous consent my entire opening statement plus collateral material be placed in the record. Uh, without objection. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman, Ranking Member, uh, these are great questions. Uh, Ranking Member Cummings and myself have made the adjustments to live within our means, barely within our means. The fact is that both of us could oversubscribe this year and do more as a result. Clearly, I uh, will finish out the year obligated greater than the funds available and will then make uh, appropriate cuts in the future obligations and hope that next year uh, additional cost savings we can find will allow us to uh, take care of those items that we def will defer at the end of the year. Every committee has an obligation to use the money wisely. I think our committee has done that. Every committee should look, though, at the Oversight Committee on a bipartisan basis, which has for multiple Congresses been moving toward greater transparency. Some of these investments include we broadcast every hearing, field hearing or here, to the greatest extent possible in real time. With rare exception, we stream, even from the field, hearings so that the public has full access. Every single one of our hearings going back through multiple chairmen are online today and available to the public. The investment in making sure that we are not just open in discussion, but we are open in all access is critical to our committee. We require open government every day, no matter who is in the chair. We work together on a bipartisan basis to make sure that we open up government. A number of initiatives coming out of our committee are designed to invest money in open government. The Data Act and other bills that are pending now before the Congress are designed to make government more accessible and ultimately, as a result, save money for the taxpayers. Sometimes you have to spend money to save money. I will tell you that it is my opinion, both having been a ranking member and now chairman, and looking at the balance between the executive branch and our branch, that we couldn't be more wrong-minded in what we are doing. Oversight under Speaker Pelosi and oversight under Speaker Boehner have been spoken of as extremely important. Committees of all jurisdiction have been instructed to do more oversight, and they have tried. Our committee has tried to do an even better job with less money. Having said that, let us just give a couple of comparisons that will be more fully laid out in my opening statement. There are 12,000 employees that work for or are the IGs of the executive branch. They spend over $2 billion, quote, maintaining an effort against waste, fraud and abuse. We don't have within our committee's jurisdiction or funds, majority and minority combined, enough resources to simply assign one person per IG to see what they are doing to see whether or not we can help or whether they are doing their job. The comparison between the executive branch's resources and ours shows the difference in whether or not we maintain properly the balance of power. Congress, both the House and the Senate, must do a great deal more if we are going to contain government. Two generations ago, Harry S. Truman asked for and received at the start of World War II a special Senate uh, committee. That task force, the Truman Commission, rooted out waste in government procurement at the start of a war. His resources were roughly equal to what our combined committee resources equal today. The investment saved countless hundreds of millions of dollars. Today that would be tens of billions of dollars. We can save $80 billion if we do a better job of oversight. We can save a few million dollars if we cut budgets. So, Today, I recognize that we will be operating on 6.4 percent next, less next year, and we will do what we have to do. But I would say to this committee, on behalf of our constitutional responsibility, 
that we need to do a great deal more and we need to allocate the resources, vastly greater than we are, to oversight. I recognize that there will be asked for cuts everywhere. I would only say here today that cutting across the board, as we did last year and as we are being asked to do again this year, makes the exact wrong message. And Chairman Lundgren, you and I often are asked whether we will vote for a 2 percent or a 5 percent across the board cut. Sometimes perhaps we do, sometimes we don't. But we always say it is not the right way to make cuts. The right way to make cuts are to say where should you cut, where should you invest. I would say that there are opportunities to cut both in the executive branch and in this branch. But there are requirements that as government grows that our oversight, whether done by this committee or other committees of the Congress, be in fact beefed up. And I would hope that we would make that point here today. And I lastly would say many of the efficiencies that we are uh, achieving have to do with leveraging electronic technology. And for the Chairman and Ranking Member, I want to thank you for the work you have done with the various committees to try to give us better resources in the House, which we leverage to, uh, uh, to try to do a better job. And I know there is an initiative by the end of the year to try to duplicate what we have been doing in our committee so that all the House's historic and current hearings uh, be simulcast so that the public has the full access that our committee uh, perhaps more uniquely stands with those groups in support of. I thank the gentleman. Yield back. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cummings. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you and good afternoon. Um, I ask unanimous consent that my entire statement be made a part of the record. Without objection, it shall be. First of all, let me um, say to, to you that I associate myself with the words of Mr. Eisner. You know, our staff took a 5 percent cut, which meant that almost every employee uh, on my staff took that cut. Um, we had a situation where, of course, now with the 6.4 percent cut, uh, we're going to have to let people go. And the work is increasing. Um, Chairman Ice is absolutely right. We. Uh, the job that we do is one of trying to bring about transparency um, as best we can and accountability. And we have on our side some major priorities, and one of them being foreclosure. Uh, we have taken the money that we have and we have used it effectively and efficiently, uh, inquiring in, into uh, foreclosure with regard to the banks, with regard to why this isn't happening and how we can solve it addressing uh, the head of the various agencies, including uh, Mr. Geithner and, and others. But I've got to tell you that the cut, 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 I don't think is the way to go. Um, because I believe now that when people hear that government reform and oversight, oversight and government reform is even looking at them or thinking about them, um, they begin to tremble because they know that we are going to do a thorough job, they know that we are going to be fair, but they know that we are going to demand accountability. So when you take away resources, I think all that does is weaken our position. And at some point, uh, the Chairman is right. The question is, is, are you cutting in one place, but cutting uh, money that could be used to make sure that you maintain that accountability? Um, I am proud of the, the job that we have been doing. And I have often said that we have to be very careful, uh, not only with regard to government agencies, but to ourselves, that, that we do not come, become mired in a culture of mediocrity. And that is exactly what can happen. If you continue to pull resources away, you don't have the personnel. The personnel that you do have are stretched to limit. Uh, people then look at a situation where they say, well, wait a minute, uh, I'm not going to get a raise. Uh, I'm working harder and harder, and they don't mind working hard. I know for a fact that people on the chairman's staff and my staff work very, very long hours, sometimes late into the night, because I get the emails. Uh, and I just think that if we are going to uh, try to accomplish the things that we want to accomplish, uh, an another 6.4 percent cut. I think it just I think it does much harm. And again, we will work within the bounds that you set for us. I mean, we, we have no choice. But the question becomes at what price? 
And um, I just think that sometimes we've got to stop and think about what we're doing. Um, I realize that everybody wants to have cuts here and cuts there. But sometimes, to be frank with you, it doesn't make any sense. And in this instance, with a, with a, with a uh, committee like ours, uh, doing the things that we do, I think other committees kind of depend on us. Depend on us. I mean, when they uh, see what we're doing, a lot of times um, they either use the information that we we're able to obtain, um, or they find ways to uh, piggyback on what we're trying to do. And so, uh, I would urge, and I would hope that this practice that we're going through uh, is not one where we're just sort of sitting here and just talking. I'm hoping that you're listening to us very carefully because I think if there's any committee that deserves to uh, have the resources that are necessary to do its job, it's this committee. And by the way, our responsibilities are only going to uh, increase because, again, we are demanding excellence from government. Just as we demand excellence from ourselves, we demand excellence from government. And so uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, I uh, yield back and thank you very much. I, I thank both of you for your testimony. Uh, you remind me of um, something that uh, I heard from uh, um, Supreme Court Justice Scalia this summer when he was speaking to a group of uh, college students, and he asked them what um, they thought uh, made us the freest nation in the world, what protected our freedoms in the governmental sense. And he said, it's not the First Amendment, not the Second Amendment, not the Fifth Amendment, not the Bill of Rights together. He said it's the construct of government that was established by our founding fathers. And by way of illustration, he said, um, what is the um, British equivalent of our president? He says the prime minister. But what does the prime minister have to be? A sitting member of parliament. He said they have no concept. They have it difficult to wrap their minds around our different branches of government that uh, create a tension in our constitution for the purpose of protecting our freedoms from a overweening government. And he said, uh, you know, we have a difference between the executive and the legislative branch. And that's why I've always been so strong on the concept of our responsibility, not just of legislation, but oversight of every committee, uh, including your committee. And when you see uh, the size of the uh, federal establishment, primarily the executive branch, versus the size of the legislative branch, and we're supposed to do oversight, um, we have to make sure that we have the resources that allow us to do that oversight. Because if we are talking about saving trillions of dollars, the savings are going to be in the executive side, not the legislative side. And in order for us to make the proper decisions, we need to have the ability to look across the horizon of the executive branch. So I understand what both of you are saying. We are in very difficult times where we believe that it was important for us to set the example. We did 5 percent cut for members, individual staffs, committee staffs, leadership staff, followed up by the 6.4 percent. Um, reluctantly, the Senate joined us. Um, at least the information I have is the Senate voted a 5 percent cut for the remainder of fiscal year 2011 in March, which uh, resulted in a 1.3 percent cut. And now they have decided that uh, leadership committee and support staff on the Senate side will be cut by 6.3 percent next year, but personal staffs uh, by 3.2 percent. So um, I think we are providing that leadership, but I do think you make a point. At what point do we say um, we have to have the resources to be able to really do the oversight that's necessary on a regular basis, no matter who's president, no matter what. Uh, party happens to control the White House. I think uh, as much as I always talk about the trespass on the proper legislative role and the executive role by the judiciary, I'm concerned about the trespass on our job by the executive branch, by way of regulation, by way of ignoring what we say in terms of legislation. So uh, I thank you for the work you're, you're doing. We have a difficult task. Uh, I mean, this is a very different set of hearings that we're having this year uh, and last year. Usually uh, people come before us seeing how much they're going to get an increase. 
And frankly, they didn't pay a whole lot of attention when they come here because they expect the increase. Uh, um, so we are on different times. Folks back home are hurting. Uh, I think they expect us to show uh, an example, give an example. I think we are. But I think we also have to, at some point in time, say, uh, how are we going to effectively do our role in um, curbing what I think is the excessive spending and the excessive power and reach of the federal government uh, by way of the executive branch? I know that's not a question, it's a statement, but I, I thank you for it. Uh, Mr. Brady. Well, Chairman Lundgren, in, in answer to your statement, <laughs> just for example, the GAO as an independent body under our auspices shows in the last five years under these two administrations $1.8 trillion in the high-risk loss to the government. This is either ex failure to get revenue or excess spending. It began at $1.31 billion in 2003. This year, the 2011, is at 551. At that rate of lost revenue and or wasted money, we are looking at the savings that this, the uh, super committee not only didn't get in 10 years, this could have gotten it to us in five, but the rate of growth means that virtually half of our projected deficit is right here to be wiped out, but it is only wiped out by getting these high-risk groups to actually change. And many of these, as, as the Chairman and Ranking Member know, many of these high-risk losses, including the IRS's failures, these, in fact, are on the list every year for 10 years. So it is clear the executive branch won't do it. And if we keep doing what we are doing, plus or minus 6.4 percent, we won't get it done either. Mr. Brady. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If this 6.4 percent comes to you and your committee, will you have to lay anybody off? Yes. Oh, definitely. Well, both of us hire primarily a great deal of attorneys, and they are already paid far less than other attorneys, not just in this town, but around the country. So that's not, making, that's not making an impact on me, but go ahead. But it, <laughs> well, you know, we are the investigative committee of the Congress. <laughs> And uh, I'm not a lawyer. No, the ranking member is an experienced lawyer. But there comes a point at which we don't get the caliber. So having a few less, but maintaining at least the minimum salary so these people don't have to leave elsewhere, will become necessary. Both of the majority and minority are currently under our maximum cap, something we never envisioned. We usually bump up against our cap, but that's been part of what we've done in anticipation of the 6.4 percent cut. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Don't any of you want to say, darn it, we're, we've changed our mind. We're going to give you the increase you need in order to do the oversight. We'll take it from somewhere else. Darrell, I've known Is you. Is there a motion on the floor? Darrell, I've known you long enough that I knew I didn't need to have to say that. <laughs> All right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you.